Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and with iOS 18 comes many new features and changes with visual changes to the lock screen and more, but messages brings a significant amount of changes. So messages or iMessage gets quite a few updates. So I thought we'd go over every new iMessage feature in iOS 18. Now, the first thing many people have been waiting for, for a very long time, and that's RCS messaging. As long as your carrier supports it, you can now use RCS messaging with your friends on an Android phone or on an iPhone when iMessage isn't enabled. If we go into our settings and then we go down to apps, then we go over to messages. If we scroll down in our settings, you'll see RCS messaging. If it's supported on your carrier, You'll see that option and then you can enable it where it says sending and receiving messages with RCS uses wireless data. Cellular network identifiers may be shared with your carrier and its partners. So if we go into messages, you'll see it actually says RCS if you have that enabled. This allows for a few different things. If we bring in an Android phone here with the Pixel 9 XL, you'll see your Pixel 9 Pro XL and I say hello you'll actually start seeing the read or read receipts and different information here if you're texting back and forth. So if I text here, we'll send that, you'll see it says hello, and then we'll say hello back. And you'll see as I'm typing on the pixel, you'll see it starts showing that I'm actually seeing their typing on the iPhone. Just like you would with iMessage, you can see that back and forth. So of course I can say hi, and if I have that option turned on here, you'll see it on the other phone as well. Or if I stop typing, it will go away and then I can say hello and you'll see it will continue showing that I'm typing on both phones back and forth. So that's great. We also have the option for emoji reactions. If I want to react with something over here, it will actually show on the iPhone and back and forth. This also supports a better group chats. So that will perform better with Android users and supports better quality photos and videos. So if maybe I add a photo here, you'll see, I can now send the photo and video just like I could before, but once it's set over RCS, it will actually be full quality. So we'll We'll give it just a moment to send and then we'll see what it looks like on the pixel. So the photo is actually coming through. It completed sending both the photo and video and both are in high quality. So if we go into the video itself, you'll see on both phones, they look the same. So you're not losing any quality here and it's finally what you would hope for as far as sending full quality photo and video. This also carries across to larger file sizes for sharing documents and more. And also there's read or read receipts that you can actually see between both devices if you have that enabled in your settings. So if we go to settings, you'll see the option here. If you have it enabled and we go back and forth, we can actually send that as a receipt. So we'll try that one more time. We'll say hello, give it a second. It sends over to here. And now it should let us know that it's red or you can see it here at 2:35 PM. So it's giving us that receipt. If you want to disable that, I typically leave that off, but at least it has that option with RCS and it will send over Wi-Fi or cellular. Something we've wanted for a long time that's being added in iOS 18 has to do with scheduling messages. If we go into our messages, this works with iMessage recipients only. Unfortunately, it won't work with SMS or RCS. So if we go to the plus button here, you'll see there's nothing to add. However, if we go out of this message and then into an iMessage session with someone else using iMessage, if we go again to the same plus button, we now have the option to send later. We can then send a message based on whatever schedule we want. This is a message scheduled to be sent later. And you'll see that here now where it says today at 7 PM tap on this and we can then select what day we'd like about two weeks out is how far we can send a message. It starts to gray out after that time. So if I want to send the message, maybe Sunday, September 15th, we can do that, select our time and our minute, and then go ahead and send it. It will schedule it for later. We can then edit it, delete it, edit the time, or just send it now. So if we delete it, it goes away, and then you're back to where you were before. Back in our message settings, if we scroll down, you'll see there's actually a demo for satellite connection demo. This is something new with the iPhone 14 series and later, where you can use actually satellites to text back and forth if you need to. So maybe you're in a remote area where you don't have Wi-Fi or messaging options. We can go to satellite connection demo and see what it looks like. This is similar to when you actually 
actually have this in an emergency with satellite SOS. So we'll go ahead and go into the demo here. We'll turn off cellular and then it actually says, try to get a clear view of the sky. It shows you what it looks like and you can try this demo out if your device supports it. We'll give it just a moment as I am indoors. It now says satellite available soon looking for signal and it says turn left to find the satellite. So basically if you're standing outside and you need to message, you can point it at the satellite here. It will try and grab a connection. You'll see it says demo complete. I'm connected to the satellite and then I can text back and forth as needed. So this is a great option if you're maybe in an area without cellular or Wi-Fi. Messages has some text formatting options as well. You'll see here where we have the little A to the right on top of the keyboard. Tap on this and we have some options for bold, italics, underline, or strike through. You can use all or none of those, and you can also have sort of a text effect as well. You can highlight a word or a whole sentence and then change it to big, small, nod, ripple, jitter, bloom, and others. So if we just go back and forth, once you send that, it will then apply that text effect. Additionally, you can utilize the new math notes feature anywhere there's text to be input. So if we put in 18, maybe plus 74, then we go to the equal sign here. It will then solve that for us if we want it to, or just tap on it and it will actually give you the sum there. So you can do that with any sort of equation that you paste in here or that you type. Tap backs actually have a new design. So that's the little thumbs up here. If we double tap, you'll see the new design where we have a heart, thumbs up, thumbs down, ha, exclamation point, question mark, and then pointing down. You actually have the option for any emoji here as well. You can now use any emoji in the entire emoji library. So if you want to do that, you can change that double tap on it, change it back to something else or whatever you'd like. Additionally, when you tap on it, it actually shows who it's actually sent from. So if you're in a group message and someone replied with a tap back, it will show at the top who sent that tap back. Also, when you go to send an emoji, so maybe we're going to use an emoji within our typing itself, we type it. If we use just send just one, it's actually a large emoji. The same is true with stickers here. So if we send a sticker, it's going to be very large. However, now as we type a different emoji, they'll shrink. You'll see here, we'll type a few. We can type four, it shrinks again. And we can even use stickers in line as well. So if we wanna put a different sticker here that we've created, you can use those in line with different text or emoji where you couldn't do that before and had to send the stickers individually. Link cards have been updated as well. If someone's sending you a link or receiving a link, the design itself has been updated to show the background color to match the image of the link itself. So Apple has a white background, Apple Events has a black background, and Google has a red background, or whatever the link is actually matching will show up here. With iOS 18.1, Apple is bringing Apple Intelligence. That's to support a devices with the iPhone 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, iPhone 16 series or M1 iPad or M1 Mac and later. As long as you have one of those devices, you'll have new features with messages and more. If we go into settings for messages, you'll see Apple intelligence and Siri, and you'll have some different options here. If we go into messages itself within messages, one of the new features with Apple intelligence is you can highlight any sort of text message here scroll over and you'll see writing tools with writing tools. We can actually change the way our overall sentence or phrase sounds. We can have it proofread or proofread the overall message or sentence. We can rewrite it. We can have it sound friendly, professional, or concise. So if I want this to sound more friendly, give it a moment here. And it says Apple intelligence is awesome. I can't wait to see what new features they add in future iPhones and devices. If we re revert back, you'll see what it said before. And again, you can change this and see what it looks like. So we want it to sound more professional. It rewrites it and then shows us what it actually says, where it says Apple intelligence is an exceptional feature and is an impressive to observe the enhancements it introduces over the time that will facilitate the optimal usage of the iPhone 16 and future devices. I like the original better, so we'll keep that. So you can actually use those writing tools anywhere there's text. Additionally, Apple intelligence offers smart messages where it offers suggestions just above the keyboard here, based on the context of what's in the message itself. In a different message, you'll see it says, okay, I understand it flashes a couple times to let you know it's there, tap on it to use it, and then you can use it to reply to someone else. So this is a great message based off context. You don't have to use them, but it does give pretty relevant suggestions. In future updates, you'll also have the option to use Image Playground and Genmoji that can be incorporated directly into messages. So Apple gives some samples here where you can 
create whatever you'd like, and then send it via message. And it even works in photos and many other things. So those are all the new iOS 18 messaging features. It will be super helpful for those using RCS with Android users. And I think some of the other ones are pretty great as well. Let me know what you think of them in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.